Well, good morning, everyone, and you're very welcome to our service here. It's Sunday the 24th of May, and we're here in St. Aidan's Parish Church, Salters Grange, just outside uh, Armagh. You're very welcome to our service this morning. Just by way uh, of announcements, just before we begin, uh, I want to mention uh, there was a very special celebration yesterday. Uh, a very special couple from St. Luke's Parish Church who were celebrating 50 years of marriage. 50 years of marriage. Isn't that amazing? So that's uh, Jimbo and Evelyn McConville. And uh, we just say uh, congratulations uh, to you both uh, on your special day yesterday. On a sadder uh, note, uh, Trevor and June Brown uh, suffered the loss of Trevor's mum in this week past, Gwen Brown from darkly outside Katie. So Trevor and June, uh, just to let you know, we remember you uh, in our prayers uh, at this difficult time, the passing of your mum, uh, Trevor. And other uh, announcements, I just want to mention that uh, and highlight to you for our parishioners of both churches that uh, next Sunday, we're receiving your free will offering envelopes, building fund envelopes and uh, even if you don't have either of those and, and you'd like to continue to contribute to the work of, of our churches, uh, two, two o'clock to three o'clock next Sunday in St. Luke's, there will be a sit-in, so I'll, I'll be there and happy to receive um, your contributions. Two to three in St. Luke's in Loch Gaul, and then three o'clock to four o'clock. Actually, I've said that the wrong way around. <laughs> Uh, that wouldn't be like me, sure it wouldn't. Uh, so next Sunday here, St. Aidan's, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and St. Luke's, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, now we'll likely have the, the front door of the, the church open, and I'll, I'll sit in the church porch so we can keep lots of safe distance away from each other, and we'll be happy uh, to receive uh, your contributions. Our Math Food Bank uh, continuing to receive uh, any donations that we're happy to give them, so I highlight uh, that to you as well. Um, I wonder uh, in this time uh, of lockdown, we're hearing uh, lots of stories of people who are doing lots of, of gardening and uh, I just wonder is it a time that we've been able to to not only do that to work in our gardens but maybe just to take time to appreciate the wonderful time of year that it is. We have celebrated on Thursday past one year from our arrival uh, in Loch Gaul and Grange and we're still amazed at the beauty of the place and, and we're still soaking it up and we're still uh, taking it in and I hope you, you get opportunities to do that as well wherever you live to just take a look around you at this time of year and see the beauty just of the flowers and the shrubs and everything that's coming in, into bloom and it just reminds us of a, a, a wonderful gracious God who has supplied this provided this beauty uh, that we see all around us. I hope you take time uh, to do that. This is a service of worship. Today is the Sunday after the Ascension. And we're uh, reminded and we're going to reflect upon the Lord as he uh, departed from the disciples and he ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, where he now prays and intercedes uh, for each of us. We're going to sing our opening hymn of worship. It's hymn number 259 in our church hymnals, Christ Triumphant, Ever Read.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God our Father, we give thanks that you raised your Son from death to life and exalted him to your right hand in glory. Send the Holy Spirit that we may worship you, our Father, and serve him, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we come before the Lord to seek his mercy and forgiveness, as we bow our heads in shame for our sins, we remember that the ascended Christ, our great high priest in heaven, prays for us. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When we have surrendered to the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. When we have treated others with prejudice, hatred or unconcern, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. When we have served our own selfish interests, rather than serve our ascended King, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today, the Sunday after the Ascension. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us grace to know that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now before Malcolm comes to bring us our uh, scripture reading this morning, I just want to talk briefly just to our kids and our young people. Uh, now kids, I wonder, uh, I'm sure you do have friends, uh, there's no doubt about that, I'm sure you do, but I wonder do you have a best friend I'm sure you probably do. We all did when we were growing up through school. We always had one particular friend that we spent most uh, of our time with. And there's a difficulty now, isn't there, with this coronavirus because you're maybe not able to see uh, your friends and maybe even your, your best friend. For some of you, uh, you're able to, to connect through the internet via Zoom or something like that maybe and, and, and are able to chat. Uh, with your best friend maybe on a, on, a, on a screen or whatever and you know what it's just it's just not the same sure it's not and it's difficult yeah, we really appreciate it. it's, it's, it's difficult uh, for you kids and, and young people uh, at this time we're thinking this morning about uh, the Lord departing leaving the disciples and, and being taken up to heaven and like they were kind of thinking you know, we would rather have you here. I mean, why are you going away? And they really knew that they were going to miss Jesus, who was their best friend. And they were really concerned about that, a little bit anxious and a little bit fearful. And maybe you're feeling that way too, just at this time. The disciples find themselves then in this in-between time because Jesus said to wait and that the Holy Spirit would come. And that when the Holy Spirit would come, which we'll be thinking about next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, he said that his presence would be in them. They would have his presence with them. Again, so they're in this in-between time. And, and you're in this in-between time too. From the time that you were at school and being with all your friends to that time that you'll be back in school again. And, and you will be back with all your, your friends again. And so in this in-between time that we all find ourselves, uh, we hold on to hope. Uh, we hold on to hope and knowing that 
Things will not always stay the way they are now. Things will change. And things will change for the disciples as well. And gone will be that fear and anxiety that because Jesus has left them when he comes and he fills them, as we think about next Sunday, with his spirit, his actual presence living with them. So we remember that these difficult times, they'll, they'll pass and times of normality will return. They will return in time. In the meantime, we look to our friend Jesus to help us through these days and to hold on to hope that things will change and will change soon. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that even though you left, Lord, you left this world, you sent your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, to come and live in us, that we could know uh, the reality of your presence with us. Lord, bless all our kids and our young people at this time. Lord, help any who are feeling particularly anxious, are fearful, or worried that this is going to go on for so long and they're not going to see their friends for a very long time. Lord, help them to hold on to hope. Lord, we see things are beginning to change and we ask, Lord, that you would speed that, Lord, that you would make a way, Lord, to take this virus away in whatever way you can, Lord. We know you can do that. Lord, that things would return to normal just as soon as possible. In the meantime, Lord, help us to look to you, Jesus, the one who gives us peace and your presence and hope to know that things will change for the better. Bless our kids and our young people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite Malcolm, our church warden, is going to come now and he's going to bring us our, our reading today, reading from the book of Acts, chapter 1. Thank you, Malcolm. Reading is taken from Acts, chapter 1, reading verses 6 to 14. So, when they met together, they asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, and suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Oz, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Malcolm. Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask now that you would speak to us all in the power of your Spirit, Lord. Help us to hear what you would say to us this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today is known as the Sunday after the Ascension, and as such, we are directed in our lectionary readings, as we have just heard, to the book of Acts, chapter 1, where we have the brief eyewitness account of the Lord's departing. The book of Acts is my favourite book in the Bible, apart from the Gospels. The reason for this is because it documents the very birth of the church and how the church began to grow in extraordinary number. It is a book full of energy and excitement, as the early Christians were the witnesses and participants of God, doing new things everywhere they went, as they learned to take the good news of Jesus all around the world. What is noteworthy is the fact that here at the beginning, 
The church had so little in terms of financial resource and faced great opposition and persecution. Humanly speaking, it seemed to have so little going for it. Its pioneers were uneducated men who had even previously struggled to understand Jesus and his mission, so much so that on many occasions he would become so exasperated with them. Added to this was the fact that at his most desperate hour of need, they would desert him. And the leader of this uh, band of merry men, Peter, even disowned having anything to do with him. Some credentials there then for starting a worldwide movement. And these leaders didn't enroll and embark on a theology course and learn valuable lessons on leadership and how to preach and teach and how to plant and grow a church. And yet, the church, rather than be diminished or even dissolved completely, grew in greater number, in greater power and influence and effectiveness. How so? Well, verse 8 has the answer. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The disciples were thinking that now that Jesus had risen from the grave, defeated death, and had overcome the evil acts of the religious hierarchy, that this must be the time that he will finally establish his kingdom. Throughout his ministry, these thoughts must have surely been a constant in the minds of the disciples, always wondering about how and when Jesus would finally set about overthrowing the occupying Roman forces. Surely now must be that time. But no, not now. Not even for another 2,000 plus years. Why? Well, perhaps it's because, as Jesus explained to them in John's Gospel, chapter 14, that in heaven there are many rooms and that he is going to prepare a place for them. And not just for them, but for all who would become his disciples over the centuries that would follow. Heaven, it would seem, has sufficient room for even countless millions who could reach its glorious destination. Jesus was now leaving them. They, on the other hand, were going nowhere just yet. There was work to be done. The Church of Christ was now to be established in all the world. And when it would be, well, he would return for it as a groom for his bride. So no kingdom rule and reign just yet. No positions of authority for the disciples just yet as perhaps they may have been hoping. Well, they may have been a little disappointed. After all, they were his closest chosen disciples in their natural human nature. They could easily have been thinking that Jesus is now going to set up his kingdom and they're going to be rulers in that. For them and each of us as Christians, well, we know that life doesn't always just work out like that. The Christian life isn't come to Christ and then everything's fine and rosy. There is work to be done. It's not about earning salvation, but about working and serving in church and witnessing in the world where we find ourselves. Work and witnessing. So the disciples now find, that find themselves in a little bit of a lull. They watch incredulously as Jesus is taken up from them in a cloud to heaven. The cloud, of course, being the symbol of God's presence. And they continue gazing upwards until awoken from their neck straining by two angels who provide them with what could be described as a little friendly rebuke, a bit of a mm -mm. Verse 11, men of Galilee, why do you stand staring into heaven? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Okay, so the show is over, basically. It's time to get ready to go to work. It's time to begin to build the church and get it ready for the Lord's return. But how? I mean, where do we start? The disciples are in this in-between period, in between the Lord's departing and his return. Not his bodily return, but his returning in spirit and in power. The spirit and power they would need to carry out 
his continuing mission on earth. They would soon become his hands and his feet, his eyes and his ears and his voice to a world and a people, some lost in sin and self-righteousness, others lost in life with no direction or having taken the wrong direction or maybe even those who have been misdirected. And they would do this not by might nor by power but by the Holy Spirit as the prophet Zechariah would proclaim as to how it all would work. The key, the crux, the essential element or ingredient, however we like to describe it, to the church being established and then beginning to grow in power, in number, in effectiveness and in fruitfulness, would be the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the manifestation and exercising of the Spirit's power in the preaching and proclaiming of the good news of Jesus. Preaching, not in the power of some personally developed persuasive skill or a learned art form, but in the power of the Spirit. This is what would see the church rise, even against violent opposition and persecution, and would eventually see these first disciples, those who were once so lacking in courage and conviction that they disowned and deserted Christ, now going forth boldly, courageously, dangerously devoted and completely committed, even unto death. It would be the Holy Spirit, Christ himself, living within each of them that would change everything because it would completely change them. This short in-between time would be a time of uncertainty for them and perhaps with that, of some fear and anxiety. They would be unsure now of what lay ahead. What they were sure of is what Jesus had promised. He had promised to never leave them nor forsake them. And so he would fulfill that promise in the most amazing and life transforming manner. Pentecost was on the horizon where everything would change. The spirit would come upon them in power as we know, but he would also bring purpose and passion and new priorities for these once former fishermen and tax collectors. And we note that having little or no education, formal training or deep theological or doctrinal learning, this would be no barrier to their effectiveness in being powerful witnesses to the risen and now ascended Jesus. Now, just so as you don't misunderstand what I'm saying here, let me clarify. In the time that we live in, and for those involved in lay, part-time or full-time Christian ministry, there is nothing wrong with having a good standard of education, formal training and deeply rooted doctrinal and theological teaching. I don't know if I've told you before, but I have a master's degree in theology. I'm not sure if I've said that before. But there is no substitute for the infilling and dwell, indwelling of the Holy Spirit for every believer. The gift of God available to all, irrespective of educational standing or previously held beliefs or past sins or present circumstances. The Spirit makes the difference, not just to those in any form of ministry, but to each and every believer. We will reflect more on this next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. Today, though, well, we remember that if we call ourselves Christians, then we are called. Uh, called to be witnesses to the risen Jesus and to get to work serving in his church. Are you serving in his church? Are you witnessing to the world around you? We are to inform others of our Christian faith and to display in word and deed what it means for us to know Jesus in our everyday lives. The early church grew in number, in influence, in effectiveness and in fruitfulness, primarily due to the power of the Holy Spirit at work within the believers. May we then be a people and a church who seek more and more the indwelling of the same Spirit, giving each of us the same 
courage and conviction that so transformed these first disciples and which resulted in the good news of Jesus exploding onto a world in need. A world which is still in great need of this good news today. Amen. At this point in our service, we proclaim our faith in what we believe and in whom we believe. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. Father in heaven, we give thanks that your Son was raised from the humiliation of the cross to the glory of heaven. We offer our prayers through him who, as our great high priest, ever intercedes for us. We pray for all who serve his church as bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. And most especially, we pray for our new archbishop. Grant grace to nourish your people through spiritual worship sound teaching and pastoral care through these challenging days of COVID-19. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. We pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in other places who are persecuted, hated or deprived, and most especially those who face the threat of coronavirus with little resources and poor health care. Sustain their faith and strengthen our fellowship with them through prayer and practical support. Guide all aid agencies working to help them and bring hope to those most vulnerable to this virus. And Lord, we pray, bring also to an end the willful persecution of those who profess Christ. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. We pray for each other as we seek to be witnesses of Christ in our everyday lives and work. Lead us by the Holy Spirit in the ways of Christ that we may learn to speak and do as he would. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and government and for the leaders of the nations as they try to resolve the difficult issues confronting them. Make them know that they are accountable to God and guide them into policies that promote justice and poverty and ensure the health and well-being of all in our society through these most challenging days. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering, those facing increasing frailty or painful treatment, those in hospital. Bring healing through the care they receive from doctors and nurses, relatives and friends. And we pray protect our frontline workers, Bless them and their families and grant us an end to COVID-19 and its effects on our world. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died. Father, raise us with all who have died in faith to eternal life in Christ. Amen. We join all our prayers together as we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We're going to sing our closing hymn of worship. And we're singing hymn number 267, Heal the Risen Lord Ascending. Sunday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in St. Aidan's, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock in St. Luke's to receive your free will offering, building fund, or our loose uh, contributions. But also, if there's anyone and you would like uh, me to call to pick up uh, those contributions during the week, please do get in touch. I'll be happy to do that if you're unable to make it next Sunday. Well, let us pray. Christ, our ascended King, bestow on us your gifts, that when our earthly lives are at an end, welcome us into glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and those whom we love this day and forevermore. Amen.